everyone, my name is Ashton. I'm here with my dad, Rick. I know this video has been long overdue because I've said about a year or so ago that I wanted to interview him and get a parent perspective on what it's like to have a trans kid. So if you haven't come to my YouTube channel yet, um, I am transgender. I was assigned female at birth and I transi transitioned to male around um, my early 20s. I've been doing that transition process for about three years now. So, what's it like having a trans? Yeah, how you doing? Hi, hi, nice to meet you, Rick. <laughs> I haven't seen him in a while, so it's nice to I saw to you drop yesterday. In. We worked out oh, yesterday. Oh, well, we worked out yesterday, okay. Um, <laughs> so, how, how, what's it like having a trans son? It's just like having a regular son. I mean, to me, it's like no different. You have some more challenges, obviously. You have to transition and do more, and we have to go through the healthcare thing together and all that. But uh, to me, it's just like having a regular son. I don't consider you my trans son, I just consider you my son. Do you remember when I first came out to you? Yes, but as you recall too, when you told me in the driveway that time, I already, I already like had a hunch that that was what was happening with you. So as you recall too, that wasn't like really a big surprise with me. Yeah, you, know, you heard mom's intuition, but there's a dad's intuition too. And I think my dad's intuition told me that, you know, that you really want to be a man instead of a woman. I want to show you something that maybe you will, maybe you'll recognize. Or okay. Maybe you want. Do you recognize this ball? Yes. What is this ball? This this is the um, this is this is an incredible story. In 2012, I was doing some vol volunteer work on a political campaign, and um, Ashton, uh, one of the first things that you wanted to do was to go to a baseball game with your dad. Remember that? Yeah. He so said we got to do it. We planned it out. It was like weeks in advance. And then I think the day of the baseball game, I get an email from one of the you know the campaign it says you've got to be at this meeting tonight. It's all hands on deck. Everybody's got to be there. It's important. You can't miss it. And I got that email and I thought back to the time when you were in eighth grade, and I missed the track meet. And you know we had planned this baseball game out for weeks, really. Yeah. And I said, you know what? Heck with this. I'm going to the baseball game with my son. It's his first one ever. So we go to the game and we're kind of wandering around um, at, at Clipper Stadium. We have a great time and we decide to go to the right field wall. And all of a sudden as we're talking, we hear um, the guy hit the ball and we're watching and it starts coming closer and closer and it's like literally about 20 feet away from us and it hits the fence behind us and you run and get the ball and you get a home run ball for your very first time. Um, attending your very first baseball game. How, like father, how often does that happen, game, yeah. right? I mean, I've, you know, I'm 55 years old, I've attended a lot of baseball games, I've never caught a home run ball, and he catches a home run ball in his very first game. Yeah, so, and I had only been like transitioning for about five months or something, I was still like so tiny and like little, and but I was I was really excited to like go to a father-son game. And, that's really cool that you brought this out. Yeah, I was really I wanted surprised. that to be like to do an big, anecdote. Big, big on -camera into the, into the camera surprise. This is like yeah. a big surprise. Yeah, yeah. Yes. That so was, very cool. Yeah, so so you, you feel like it was like me re-getting to know you, you re-meeting your child in a way, but I'm still here, or how do you feel about experiences like this? I mean, what, oh, the first baseball game? Yeah. Um, I thought that there was a lot, there was a big lesson to be learned in that. I mean, number one is um, I very easily could have, like, you know, we could have missed the game and rescheduled it. We might never have caught this ball. That one time, that one night, that ball was right there, we were right there, it, would, it probably wouldn't have happened again. So I took it as a lesson. I, number one is that I thought we were on the right track. It was right. almost like a sign from the universe that we were on the right track, you know. And, um, and then secondly, just to really um, make time for the right priorities in life, which is you. Yeah. So it was, it was really, this little baseball here carries much more meaning than, than it looks like. It looks yeah. like just a baseball, but it's much bigger than that, so. Yeah, so, so you're a Christian, you're a guy that's a Christian, and yes. you um, have a son that's transgender, and as right. you know, there's a lot of like, a backlash, a lot of it's like yes. from the Christian community, and how do you navigate? Which I don't get. Yes, I consider myself a Christian, but really not, I don't really get into that whole fundamentalist thing. I think that's really crazy. I mean, um, I think that's really a perversion of Christianity. Well, when you tell people that essentially been born um, 
the way they are and have been designed by God, if, you know, if that's what you believe, and, uh, and condemning them to hell for all eternity for being how they were designed by God is completely insane to me. That makes no sense at all. I don't believe that God makes mistakes, and I believe that transgender people um, are divinely inspired and divine souls who have essentially just been put in the wrong body, but um, there is a greater purpose to that, apparently, because God doesn't screw up. So there's a purpose to transgender people, there's a purpose to gay people, and, um, and they're, are, they're as loved by God as anyone else. And I've always felt all along that on your journey, our journey, um, that there was a huge spiritual component to it, and that was really allowing your soul to really express itself as the gender that it was meant to be. And, you know, you have a masculine soul. And while, you know, nature didn't get it right the first time, fortunately, we're not living in the 1950s or something. The technology is there. You've progressed, in my view, amazingly well. I mean, you know, you turned into like a handsome, rugged guy. And uh, I'm really proud of you. So, um, you know, if you're going to be transgender, you really couldn't pick a better time in history than right, right now. And it's only going to get better as technology advances more and more. It's probably the hardest question that I'm going to ask yeah. you. Um, as a few of you all know, I had a sister who passed away when I was 15, and she had cancer since she was 10 months old and passed away about a few months before she was about to turn nine. And I get a lot of emails from kids who watch my channel and they tell me that their parents have told them that it's like losing a kid when their kid comes out as transgender. What's your immediate gut response when you hear parents say something like that? There's really no comparison. Yeah. I don't really, you know, you asked that a right. couple times. Right. And you said that people have like written to you yeah. and asked about that and that just boggles my mind. Mm -hmm. You know, having, having gone through the actual loss of a child mm -hmm. and you went through it too, you right. were there, um, you know, at the very end, um, I don't understand that at all. I think that's a very um, simplistic way of, of looking at transgender, to say that your child has died. You know, the, there is one phase of your child's life and then there's the real phase of who they really want to be. You had, you know, the female phase and you have great memories from that. Mm -hmm. And I will always treasure those and cherish those. But the, when you really uh, lift it off and achieve takeoff, it was when you became a man. That's when everything really started to kick into you. And it was, it's been very impressive to watch you. Having lost a child, um, there's really no way to articulate the depths of your pain and the agony and the grief that you go through. So to equate your child being transgender and transitioning over to a child dying is, to me, crazy. There's really no comparison. Um, you're still the same person. I have a son now, and he's wonderful, and we hang out. And, uh, you know, not that I always, you know, right. cared whether you were a son or not. Yeah. I'm not one of these guys like, oh, I always wanted a son, and yeah, now you're my son. Yeah. No, it's not like that. We were close before. We're close now, probably closer now. Right. And I don't see why that would change. I don't see why a parent would reject their child. I mean, the, the reality is there's, you know, science behind this. The brain of a transgender person is the is the opposite sex of what their body is. It's not like a mental illness or perversion, all this perversion, all this wacky stuff that people say, and that's just nuts. It just happens, and um, the wonderful thing now is that people are much more understanding and accepting about it. So I never got, um, why a parent would reject their transgender child. It doesn't make sense. Because I'm here and there's something you can do about We're here. it. We're here. We lost love and we both went through it together. We know what it's like when suddenly you really lose someone. You're not losing your child. You're gaining your child. You're, you're really gaining their, their full humanity and their full expression of who they are as a human being. And it's wonderful. You know, you were really kind of tortured when you were female. You know, you had like body, body dysphoria issues and stuff like that. And you're, really unhappy and I could never, you know, me personally, I could never figure out what was wrong and I'd go upstairs and talk to you and stuff and, you know, and you never really told me, you never like, just said, here's what's really going on. Right. And for years, you know, you really struggled with a lot of, uh, you know, depression and yeah. anger and stuff like that, and dysphoria, so, 
now it's great. So they couldn't be happy. Is there any advice you would give to parents who maybe their kid just came out or they're having yeah. a hard time dealing with this? I just, you know, you have a choice between suicide or full support. And it, it really, that's what it is if you push them. Is, you know, you were very vulnerable in the early stage and every transgender person is. You know, this is massive stuff to figure out. Your gender identity and you know, how your parents are going to react and the people and friends. So, um, I think you have to, I, to me it was a no-brainer, it was full support, it was all-out support. There was never any conflict like, oh my God, you know, what am I going to do? And it, was, it, was, it was never about me or anything, it was all about you, yeah. you know? And I, I think back to that night when you were down at University of Dayton and you got the call, mm -hmm. and you were like near suicide, and we didn't know at the time what was going on, we just thought it was depression. But the reality was, it was you just not seeing a path forward anymore mm -hmm. as a female. It just had reached the, the uh, you know, explosion point, so to speak. So I would just say, you know, you've got to be very supportive. You can fit it in with your religion, with your spirituality, or even if you're none of those things, if you're an atheist, it doesn't really matter. But you've really got to opt for all-out support for your child, or, or you can really make or break their future. And, and when I say break them, I'm talking about you could push them into serious depression or substance abuse or other stuff like that. So, you know, um, if you love your child, you love them no matter what, okay? It's like divine, inspired, you know, love from God. It's the same thing. And you just accept them and help them and, and you send them you're going to transition. Um, you know, you may recall the first thing it says, we're gonna, we're gonna do it the right way, right. we're gonna get the best medical care, and we're gonna just go all out, and I'm gonna be with you every step of the way. And, and that's how it's been. And I couldn't be happier. I could not be yeah. happier at this guy's transition, the way he is right now. I am so proud of him, I wanna say that. Um, he's a good guy, he works hard in school, and uh, he's got a, a good future ahead of him, and I, I couldn't be happier how his transition is going. So. Do you see a difference? Can you talk about maybe the difference that you see in my um, the way I carry myself between pre-transition to now? Yeah, there's a lot of commonalities. I mean, you were always very well spoken. You were always intelligent. You, were, you loved sports and athletic and went to fitness and stuff like that. You would always, you know, go to Whole Foods and like try to eat well and stuff like that. So I mean, you know, those things don't change. Yeah. You keep them with you. But in terms of just um, the inner torment that you used to carry around, you were just so tormented. Yeah. You always had just like this turbulence inside you, and we could never figure out what it was. And now it was just like it's just it's just gone. You know, now you're you're just you're truly a man, and it embraced masculinity and your and your true identity. And right. It's just incredible to see. What's the hardest part about this whole thing? The transgender thing. Yeah. I think as a parent, you, you worry, um, first and foremost, you want to make sure all the physical stuff is going right. right. You know, this is intricate stuff, you know, you got to really do right. There's, you know, there's testosterone, there's top surgery, you know, we got to map everything out to go to Dr. Gary Moyes in Florida right. and, and things like that. So, you, you know, you want to make sure the medical stuff is right and I do a lot of reading and I ask good questions. And then second, you just want to make sure that your child has a uh, the road paved ahead of acceptance in society. You know, as you know, I have your back on anything that you need, and I will always be there for you. So, you know, I'm just happy as can be that we reached this point that we can make videos and right, talk and about talk this wonderful about transition. So. Yeah. Is there is there anything else you want to say to my? I'd say that if any parent um, really has deep questions about this or is unsure that um, through Ashton, email you through your webpage or your, your, uh, your blog, and maybe we'll set up a special parent thing, but I'll talk to any parent in any country or any city or state in the US and walk you through it and reassure you that this is you know, something you can do and you need to be, you're a very important part of this journey with your child you need to, and you can really, really be a great help and help them make the transition to be who they always want to be. So. So if anyone wants to um, have questions to my dad, you can email me, and then if they're more towards my dad, I can forward the email to him, and you can leave me questions on my Tumblr, on Facebook, um, you can add
me on Instagram, any of those things, I'd be happy to answer your questions. And also my dad is here for a resource. resource I will send uh, the questions your way. So, cool. yeah. Awesome. Thanks, thanks for having me. <laughs> thanks, nice to be thanks. part of your video. <laughs> Right. Thanks for all you're doing to help everybody too. I'm yeah. really proud of you in that direction too. He's proud of my YouTube channel. Did you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> all right.